six F. Fly down. Felix Sydney. Thank you. All right, exercise six F. We're going to learn to sketch cubic graphs. Now, everything that you needed to know was all in six B, six C, and six D. Everything else was um, pre knowledge and. and Else will just be reliant on basic skills. So, very similar to quadratics. Remember, I told you in quadratics you had to know your 6, I mean, 3a to 3f, or now you have to know your 6b, 6c, 6d. Those are the three core exercises to keep up with the workload. 6f, you're going to tie all that together and you're going to sketch the graphs. So, what I'm going to do on the, the slide here is I'm going to give you the possible graphs that you can have, possible equations that you can have, and then I work on four examples so you can see how I sketch them. They're all the same skills. I'm going to use 6B, 6C, and 6D to show you how I'm going to solve them and how I, I sketch them, okay? All right, so here we go. This is what I want you to copy down as part of your notes. We've got types of cubic graphs. Now, for each one, I'm going to give you two different graphs so you can see the variety that you can have. Now, cubic graphs. You can have a cubic graph where you only have one x-axis intercept. The number of x-axis intercepts will tell you what the shape will look like. That's why I want you to copy this down. Yeah. Now the first x-axis intercept, you can have something like this. That will have one x-axis intercept. Now this shape will be of something like this. I want you to copy that down. Okay. That will have one x-axis intercept and it's a cubic graph where x only has one factor. Remember, the number of brackets you have will tell, will tell you the number of x-intercepts you have. So when you write x cubed, technically that means x times x times x. So really, yes, you do have three brackets, but they're all the same brackets. That's why you only have one x-axis intercept. It's x times x times x. Okay? So for one x-axis intercept, how do you know? You normally just look at the brackets. How many brackets you have will determine how many x-axis intercepts you have. Yeah. Now, occasionally, you will get a graph where it's tricky, where you do get one x-axis intercept, but it doesn't look like this. What it will look like, it may look something like this. So there's a dip. There's a dip, but that dip doesn't actually touch the x-axis. There's only one point that it crosses. Now, in this particular situation, for it to have one x-axis intercept, it would have to be something like x multiplied 2 a quadratic factor that you can't factorize. So, for example, if I give you x squared, uh, I don't know, let's do plus, plus x plus 7. See, that graph there is likely that you are going to get one x-axis intercept. But because you can't solve for this one, you can't factorize and solve for that, it ends up telling you that you've got a, a, a curve or like a turning point, oh. but it doesn't touch the x-axis. Okay, so this would be an example yeah. Oh. It will be an example where you have one x-axis intercept. Okay, and the reason why... Sorry? I'll talk about that later. I'm just trying to get you to notice that the number of brackets you have... Now, this has two brackets, but this one you can solve. Because if you let y be zero, you can solve for x. So as long as you can solve for one of them, you will have one x-axis intercept. You can't have no x-axis Yeah. That's, that, that's a perfect uh, point to analyze, that you can't have in a cubic graph, you're always going to have an x-axis intercept. No, you're always going to have it as well, because it always continues on infinitely, so eventually it will come in. Okay, now those are your two types. Thank you. Your second type, you can have two axis intercepts. So, how do you have two x-axis intercepts? This is one possibility. You can have a cross through one, but then the dip actually touches the x-axis. So you can have two. Now this would mean that the second factor, you can solve it. But how do you know that you have a turning point that curves back up? I'll give you an example. It'll be something like this, where you could have x minus one, Oh, sorry, plus one. So that will tell you you've got an x-axis intercept at negative one. And let's say, so if this was, let's say, uh, positive one and negative one, then you can have x minus one 
square. When you have a square on one of the factors, what that means is you've got what we call a repeated factor. What that does is it turns it back, it makes it come back, like a turning point. Okay? So if you remember back in uh, quadratics, this thing, remember back in quadratics, if I, if I ignored that x plus 1, and asked you to sketch that, what you would tell me is you would say, it moves to the right by 1, and it's a turning point. True? And that's exactly what's happening here. It's moving to the right by plus 1, and it's got your turning point. But because it's a cubic graph, It'll come back and it'll cross through x equals negative 1. Okay? I'll give you another one as an example. You can have a graph where it looks like this. If I give you y equals to, let's say, x squared, okay, x squared multiplied to x minus 1. That's hypothetically say I gave you this one. Now, I said that if you have a square on one of the brackets, what it does is it will make it a turning point. So notice I've got an x squared. So if I put a square on the x, that's where it's going to have a turning point. Now, if you were to solve this, you let y equal 0, you find that x has a point at 0 and at 1. And those are your two x-axis intercepts. So this graph here will have 0, and 1, but a repeated factor at x squared. So this is what it'll look like. So where you put that square will tell you where the, the turning point would be, okay, where it turns. So I'll give you another one just so that you can see what I mean. Let's say I gave you y equals to x minus 1 squared times x, right? See, where I'm putting the square now, it's exactly the same as this, but I'm putting a square on the x minus 1. What that tells me is it's going to cross through 0, but it's going to have a repeated factor at 1. So what does that look like? The only way for that to happen is it crosses through 0, but it has a repeated factor at 1. That's what it would have to look like. Okay, so it crosses through 0. You can see that's a bracket of its own. x times something squared, that squaring part will have a turning point. Okay? Whereas if I put the square on the x, that tells me I have a turning point at 0, but I cross through 1. Okay? So I'll do another one. I'll do another one just so you can understand what I'm saying. Let's say I want it to be a negative graph, right? Let's say I do this. Say so I give you negative x minus 1, x plus 2 squared. Let's say I do that. Okay. Now the first thing is, if you have x minus 1, that's going to be one of the x-axis intercepts. x plus 2 is going to be another x-axis intercept. Now if it's at x minus 1, what would my x-axis intercept be? 1. 1. And if it's x plus 2, where is my other 2? So that means, yes, but you have a rep repeated factor at negative 2. So at negative 2 and 1, at negative 2 you should have a repeated factor. Now, because I've got a negative here, it's the other way around. Now, instead of going up, down, and then up again, now it will be down, repeated, and down. You see what I'm doing now? So because I've got an x plus 2, it's a repeated factor. I've got a turning point. But because it's a negative, it's going down, then down again. Whereas when it's positive, it goes up, then up again. That's the difference between the two. Okay? So there's so many varieties here. That's why I'm trying to teach you to read the, the x-axis intercepts. The number of brackets will tell you how many axis intercepts you have. And the, the brackets where you put the squares will tell you how many times it comes up or down. Okay? How do we feel about that? Does that make a bit more sense? That's the, the trickiest one. First one's easy, trickiest one, and the third one is the one that we all do. So this is the one where it's the easiest one to draw. So here we go, you can have a third three x-axis intercepts, and it'll look like this. x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 3. This is an example. Right down. This is an example of 
how many x-axis you will have. And you can see you've got three brackets. Three brackets implies that you're going to have three intercepts. And this will tell me one, negative two, and three. So if you were to sketch it, negative two, one, and three, it's a positive graph. It goes up, down, and back up. That's how you can get three axis intercepts. Okay? You can have three axis intercepts in the negative direction too. Sorry? Oh, uh, this is a positive. Not a frown. Frowns only go forward with quadratics. So how do you know if it's positive or negative? If you look, the further you go to the right, if it keeps going up, it's positive. If the further you go to the right, it goes down, it's a negative. That's why this is a negative graph. This is a positive graph. The more you go to the right, it gets larger. The more you go to the right, it gets smaller. This is called negative. So if I want to draw a frown, like for it to go down, I will give you something like this. Y equals, let's say, negative x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3. Okay? This will tell me, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, will tell me I have intercepts at 1, 2, and 3. And it'll look like this. 1, 2, 3. But because it's negative, it will go down, up, and then down again. So it depends on the last number, right? Sorry? It depends on the last number. Depends on what last last intercept. Yeah. No, it depends on the, the shape. So if it's positive or negative. Yeah. So, 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 so,
So how do you do all that? This is what the shape should actually look like and I'll, I'll show you why. It actually goes down one, two, and three. Now this shape is not a cubic graph because this is an x to the power of four. So you can do it x times x is x squared and times that with another x squared that's an x to the power of four. Now, Remember, this is a bit further than what you need to understand, but x to the power of 4 is an even number. So if it's an even number, whatever happens to the left, it, go, it happens to the right. So if you have a look, if I go to the left, this goes up. If I go to the right, it also goes up. That's exactly what a quadratic graph looks like. You see, with a quadratic graph, any even power shapes will have this effect. Any odd power shapes will be the opposite. Okay, so cubics to the power 5 to the power 7 will go down and go up. But what you said was correct. That putting that 2 on will make it a turning point. Okay. Fantastic. So, for example, why down? Thank you. For example, let's say I wanted to cross through negative 1, but I wanted to repeat at, let's say, 5. <laughs> Right, I want a turning point at five. Let's say I want it to look like, like, uh, like this. I want it to repeat like that, okay? But I want the shape to be like this. Let's say I want that. Now you can first see this graph here. Is this a negative graph or is it a positive graph? Uh, negative. negative graph. So the first thing you should know, it's a negative graph. There is a repeated factor. Oh, because I've gone badly there. At, at x? Minus 5. x minus 5. But at the same time, I've also crossed through negative 1, so it should be... Yes. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. That if you put a square on it, it becomes a turning point. Now if I switch that around, I'll do it in red. If I do it like this. If I gave you negative x plus 1 squared, times x minus 5, okay? What this would now mean is I'm repeating the negative 1, but I'm crossing through at 5. So what would that look like? It'll look like this. Repeats at negative 1, and it crosses through at 5. See how it's still the same shape, but it depends on where I'm repeating it. If I put a plus 1, it repeats there. If I repeat it at the negative 5, over here. That's the difference between the two. Okay, so what you have to take out is where you're squaring it. Where you square it will have the repeated factor. Okay, good. All right. That was the bulk of the learning. Now we can do exercises. Here we go. Let's do this question. Pump this question down. Here we go. So, looking at this question here, how many x? How many x-axis intercepts do you expect to have in this one? Yes, Sam? Three. Three, because you've got three brackets. And where should the x-axis intercepts be, Yasmin? Fantastic. How do you know x-axis intercepts? You let y go to zero. So here we go. Let y go to zero, you got x minus one, x plus two, x plus one, shh, by down. Using what you learnt in 6D. So remember I said you got 6B, 6C, and 6D to solve. This tells me x has to equal to one, x has to equal to negative two, and x has to equal to negative one. So, let's put in the x-axis intercepts. You got negative two, negative one, you got one. Right now, here. Now that I've got my x axis intercepts, remember how did you find it? You let y go to 0 and you use 6d. Now that you got the points, the second step is what kind of graph do I have? Is it a positive or is it a negative graph? Positive. How do you know? There's no negatives, and sometimes you just got to test it. Do x multiply to x multiply to x, and what you see. So you get an x cubed. Now it's a positive one. So if it's a positive shape, it should look something like that. Okay, the further you go to the right, it should go up. That's what a positive shape looks like. 
Now, I've got my x-axis intercepts, and you're right, Ian. What do you have to also find? Yeah, I just asked you a question, dude. Were you listening to that? Yeah, what was it? I'm going to ask someone else because you're not listening. How do I find, what, do, what else do I need to find? I've got my x-axis in the set. I know the shape. What else do I need? Minus set. You, know, you can't find turning points in year 11 at this point. Towards the end, I can teach you how to find it, but right now you can't. Okay, so at this point, you're just going to sketch x in a set, y in a set. Now, how do you find y in a set again? Good, let x equal to 0. So in our case, we got y is equal to 0 minus 1. You got 0 plus 2, 0 plus 1. Let's work that out. Negative 1 times 2 times 1. Negative 2. So this is my y intercept. Thank you. Now we're going to sketch the graph all together. We're going to cross through using that same shape I have up here. I want to cross through them all. So here we go negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. Oops. Let me do it again. There we go. That's how you start sketching. So you get your x intercepts y intercepts, the shape of the graph, and you put them all together. And that's all you need to do. How do we feel? It's all right? Let's do another one. Will, I'm watching you. You're talking quite a bit. Yeah? Here we go. Next one. You're going to try this one now, Will. Yeah. Because apparently it's too easy for you. That's why you're talking. Here we go. What's the first step? That's all. Wait. What's the first step you gotta do, Will? Alright. Next one. Billy, what will we do? We have to use factor theorem. 6c. Yeah, 6b, 6c, 6d. And I told you guys to do that as part of your work, right? You got 6b, 6c, 6d. 6c. You can't do anything with this one now. You need to factorize it first. That's the first skill. Now, the only way to factorize, we did it in 6d. The only way to factorize is long division. Factor theorem, but you can only use long division if you know what you're dividing. So the only way, that's why you use factor theorem to find out what you're dividing. Now, what numbers am I going to test to get my factor theorem? Six, negative six. Good, you got that negative 6, find the factors of negative 6. You got 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now you're going to keep testing these numbers. It's usually 1, 2, or 3, the smaller numbers. So now we'll use factor theorem to test them. So here we go. Let's test 1. Let's test x equals 1. That will give you 1 cubed squared 5 times 1 minus 6. Let's work that out. That's 1, it's 2, minus 5, minus 6. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't give you 0. Let's test another one. Is it three? Is it negative one? All right, let's try negative one. Y equals two negative one cubed plus two times negative one squared minus five times negative one minus six. Let's work that one out. You got negative one plus two plus five minus six, and yes. That gives you zero. So this is factor theorem. We now know x equals negative one, so it has to be x plus one. And that's what we did in 6c, right? So if it's x equals negative one, rearrange it. We know this is a factor. So now that you know it's a factor, do what Sydney said before. What do you have to do after you find long division? So here we go. We got x plus one divide by x cubed. It's 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Finn, stop talking. Here we go. So now we use what we learnt in 6b. So we go 6b, yes, you're right. x squared. x squared times x is x, square, x cubed. And then x, that gives you x squared. Find the subtraction. You get x squared. Drop down the value. Next one, well, what's the next value? X, fantastic. X times X is X squared. X times 1 is positive 1X. Find the remainder. So remember, find the line, find the remainder, drop down the value, and then same thing again. This is a minus 6. 
So you got minus 6x, minus 6. <laughs> there we go. Now, what I've done is I found my quadratic quotient. I've got a remainder of 0. This is what I know. This y value, this y equation now becomes, instead of y equals to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. See, I don't know how to solve that. Thank you. I don't know how to solve that. So now what I just did was I found one factor, which you told me was x plus 1. I factorized it by dividing, and I got x squared plus x minus 6. Now the only extra step you have to do now is factorize x squared plus x minus 6 using your quadratic skills. So let's factorize that. x plus 3, x minus 2. Yes, that is correct. So now that you've got your three brackets, Good. Now you can sketch the graph. See, now that you got and factorized, this is exactly the same as the first example. X equals negative 1, negative 3, and 2. It's a positive graph. So I already know the graph has to go through negative 1, negative 3, and 2, and it's a positive graph. Whoops. Uh, something like that. All right, let me just fix that. Here we go. Ah. What am I missing though? I've got my x intercepts. And what's the y intercept looking in that equation? Negative 6. You learn x equals 0 to find out your y intercept. And equals negative 6. All right, Ryan. Thank you. Bye, down. All right, so what I've just shown you so far, listening, what I've shown you so far is I'm just revising 6b, 6c, 6d. See, I haven't done anything different. This was 6c, 6b, you got to do this step, 6d, find the intercepts, and then using what you learned in year nine, find a set, but x equals zero, sketch the graph. So all the three skills is 6b, 6c, 6d. That's why I told you over the weekend, I said, if you had to study those are the only three exercises you needed to get to 6F, yeah? I'm going to leave you with this exercise to practice because that's the expectation. Now remember, homework was due today. I gave you that sheet and that revises 6B, 6C, 6D. There's only like three students who are away on Friday who didn't receive it. So those are excused. But everyone else, I'm going to mark it. I'm going to see who's done their homework. You can't give me an excuse on that one. I'll just put a zero for that. I have no idea wrong because I did the remainder theorem, but there's no whatever that's called. Like I just did it. No, so in this case, oh, yeah.